Hi, my name is Scott, I'm an Intermaniac, and today we're going to continue our homecoming series with completing the witch conversion. What up, Mini Family? If you want to buy a Miniac t-shirt, now is the time to do it. They are 25% off, and you can find them linked in the description below. Can I be honest with you guys for a second? Ever since I started this homecoming series, I've been begrudgingly doing it. All my brain is telling me to do is to go dissolve into a couch and be a useless piece of garbage. But I know that I want to always bring at least one piece to Crystal Brush, and I want to experiment with video formats here on YouTube, so what do I do? To me, the answer is pretty obvious. Life sometimes is a bunch of intermediate steps that you don't necessarily want to do to accomplish a goal that you want to accomplish. So essentially, nut up or shut up. So we're gonna do that. First thing we need to do to our witch is start to shave down the limbs that were a little bit mismatched when they were glued together. After that's complete, we can start to bulk them out a little bit more with epoxy sculpt because we're gonna remove some material or shoulders look like they no longer exist, so we'll add some more to them. Okay, now that all the limbs are smoothed out, we need to deal with the hair that we so brutally sawed off in a previous episode. I want hair that's flowing in between the witch and the cross, and also behind the cross, but first, we need to deal with the hair that's in between the witch and the cross. So I think I'll take some more epoxy sculpt, and I'll roll it together, smoosh it in between the witch and the cross, and then start to form it into a close approximation of hair. Wish me luck. A lot of what sculpting is, is working incrementally, in layers. You're not achieving your final look immediately on your first pass. So this first pass of hair isn't going to be the final look. It's just laying the foundation for future layers. While I work on the hair, I want to answer some questions that I've been getting in the comments section about this piece. And the first question that I keep getting is, is adding that cross going to increase the total height of the diorama beyond what Crystal Brush allows for? And the answer is yes. But you shouldn't really worry about it. No judge at Crystal Brush is breaking out a ruler to make sure that you are within a millimeter of the total height limit. It really is more of a guideline. And if it so happens that I get booted out of my category because I'm two or three mil over, then I'll be eating my words. <laughs> Another suggestion was for the stone window. People were like, Scott, why didn't you just use a washer? And that's because I'm an idiot and didn't think of it. Another question or comment that I want to address is that the diorama isn't necessarily realistic. And I understand that. No one would ever burn someone this close to another building. People got the impression that my intention was to make the building smaller, to make it seem like it was farther away, but that wasn't my intention. What I want to be able to do is to have the cross casting an upward shadow onto the church behind it, and that wouldn't necessarily work if it was so far away. It needs to be closer to have a crisper shadow. I think that has a kind of a cool, moody feel to it. There is something to be said about having a diorama that has a cool factor versus a realistic factor, especially in a competition like Crystal Brush, where a portion of your final score is public voting. You really want to wow people right away to get those higher scores. Okay, now that the initial pass on the hair is done while that's curing, just so that we're multitasking here, let's start chopping up some wood that will eventually be put at the base of the cross. Okay, it's the next day, the epoxy sculpt has dried, and now my plan is to start to move on to the second layer of hair to kind of give it some more dimension and thickness and make it seem like it's not so flat. 
Hold up a second. As I'm rotating this model around, I'm starting to notice that the previous layers of epoxy sculpt that I used to hide seams wasn't the most smooth of a transition. And I'm not sure what is betraying me at this point, whether it's my skills or my tools, it's probably my tools. But I need to grab some sanding twigs and dental tools now to smooth that transition to make sure that it is seamless because it will show up like a sore thumb when I prime this thing. It's at this point that I now also want to add some hair to the back of the cross, like draped across one of the horizontal members to make it seem like she was kind of just thrown up there haphazardly. I'm starting to get the feeling that I'm in a little over my head at this point. I don't know if this is going to look good when it's primed. I'm getting the feeling that it's going to look like trash. I'm kind of like in that 80, 20, 80, it's gonna look like trash. 20% it's gonna look good and it's gonna be an absolute miracle, but who knows? I guess we'll just keep soldiering on at this point. Also during this stage of epoxy sculpting, I think I wanna start working on the bottom of the dress. So my plan is to drill some holes for armatures for the epoxy sculpt to rest on. This dress is kind of thick and to do it just without any kind of structural integrity might be a little bit difficult. So I think I'll start with two holes and then start sculpting on top of it. Now an annoying thing about the bottom of the dress is that it kind of flares out at the bottom. So I think I'm gonna to need to mimic that detail in order to seamlessly transition between plastic and epoxy sculpt. Hold up, this is looking like utter trash. I'm gonna to need to go back to the drawing board here. I think in order to get a seamless transition in between epoxy sculpt and also plastic, we need to shave down the plastic. We need to taper it to leave space for the epoxy sculpt so that it can kind of ramp up into the detail. Otherwise, what I'm gonna get is this kind of weird little bump or lip right where the epoxy sculpt starts. So let's give that a shot. We're getting to the point in this phase of our working where too much of the miniature is covered in fresh epoxy sculpt. And what can happen is if you move on to a new part, you'll leave a nice big thumb imprint on an old part without even realizing it, ruining your past work. So we'll put it down, let the epoxy sculpt cure, and then come back to it tomorrow. All right, today is a new day. It is the final day that I'm going to be working on this miniature for this video. By the time you're watching this video, I'm gonna be in Hawaii living it up, escaping this weather in Minnesota. In the month of February, it snowed over 30 inches. Working with epoxy sculpt has taught me the importance of being retrospective and working in stages. When I have to let things cure overnight, I come back to it with a different perspective and eye. And when I came back to my model, I didn't like how one dimensional the hair was. It was like one thick strand all the way down. I wanted to change in width as it gets toward the bottom to get thinner. So I shaved some of that off, added some more to make it look more like it was tapering when it got toward the bottom. At some point in this process, I lost the hand of the miniature, which was a nightmare but I found it and then I lost it again on my carpet, which was even more of a nightmare. I'm screwed. But I found it again. <laughs> Someone in the first video commented that the witch should have floaty hair as there's fire below her and it's causing some kind of rush of air to make the hair float a little bit. And I've been wrestling with trying to figure out how to do this because really it's individual strands of hair that are wispy and floating. That's really hard to pull off. So, I found this really thin metal wire inside of a coaxial cable. My plan was to glue it on to my witch's hair to use as an armature for future epoxy sculpt. After gluing it on, I put some epoxy sculpt on top of the glue joint just to kind of strengthen it a little bit. And then I tried the very tedious and very difficult act of trying to get epoxy sculpt to stick to this metal wire. I struggled a lot. <laughs> it might have been helpful to scuff up the wire a little bit to kind of give it some more adhesion, but it's also just so thin that I'm not sure that would have done much of anything. So what I kind of decided to do was to put it on a little bit thicker, and then my hopes is that when I come back after it's dried rock hard, as the box suggests, it would be easy to shave down either with 
a Dremel and kind of a bowl gouge, a tiny bowl gouge, or maybe an X-Acto knife and some sanding tools. That's my hope, but I don't know if it's actually going to work out. While waiting for the epoxy sculpt on this round to fully cure, we needed to parallelize our work a little bit. So I started to undercoat my building. Now I started with a black primer and then started to build up layers of warm gray and warm white. Now I want an undercoat to represent a fire close to the bottom of the building so the darker parts of the building are going to be the parts that are higher up and then the mid-tone will be gray and then the very bottom of the building will be white which is closest to our light source which in this case is the fire. So that was going really nicely and then I realized that I forgot to put the freaking logs on my base and also the fire which is what the light source is. So I paused on the undercoat and super glued on those logs that I had cut in a previous time. And once those were adhered, I started to work on the fire. Now there's a guy on Facebook, his name is Monstroids, and he has a really fun way of doing fire, and I wanted to give it a shot. The way it essentially goes, you take a cotton bud and you kind of soak it in a mixture of PVA glue and water, but not a whole lot. Once it's a little bit soaked, take a metal implement like I used an awl or an X-Acto knife and start to shred the fibers a little bit. When you start to get like kind of messy, wispy tendrils, take some more of that PVA glue and water and mixture and start to collect some of those small fibers into larger individual flames. When the shape looks generally good, snip it off with some scissors and stick it down to where you want it to be. Then take some acrylic gel medium and kind of fill in the gaps where the fire should be spreading to the logs. I found that with the acrylic gel medium, you can put it down and then pluck up the paintbrush you're using and it makes a tiny little flame, which was great to kind of give more interest to the body of my cotton, which was kind of just one lump of mass. This is kind of a tedious thing to do, the cotton. It was a little bit tricky, so if you're going to give it a shot, you give yourself a few tries to get it right. Well, guys, that's where we are going to end this video. You know, as I said, halfway through this video, I was starting to feel a little in over my head, and I still feel that way now which might explain why I'm making mistakes in this process, doing things in the order that uh, they shouldn't be done. But I think being in over your head uh, can be a good thing sometimes to push you to learn new things. Having a deadline, in this case for me, a crystal brush is helpful to stick to finishing these things despite being in over your head. If you guys like this video, obviously there are four other parts of the Homecoming series you can check out in a playlist in the top right-hand corner of the video. I don't know if that was the right corner. If you like the channel and you want to support it, in the description you can find several links that enable you to do so, namely a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards, like a Discord server where you and I can hang out any day of the week or getting access to a video one week ahead of time. There's a merchandise store where you can buy a t-shirt with my logo on it and also an Amazon shopping link that you can use while shopping on Amazon. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to... Hey, my man!